first of all, um, and quickly, given the time restraints, I really want to thank this opportunity to be a part of this panel, as well as um, to contribute an essay for this truly historic show. Um, what I wanted to do today is actually offer Regina Zidon's nude. You can go to the first slide, please. Um, and look at it through uh, the lens of the portrait portraiture genre. It seems to me as if um, in comparison to the other presentation that we've just seen, uh, Zidon's contribution is just so subtle in its offering and, uh, and yet um, so successful in its reception that it, it, it raises a lot of questions. And to my understanding, the way in which this piece was able to um, offer an inter intervention into the, into the nude genre is through indeed those um, specific views that uh, those specific aspects that are of um, the portrait genre. So the focus of today's talk is the 1925 nudes by the English speaking Quebecois artist Regina Zayden. The piece, which is found today in the collection of the National Gallery, belongs within a long tradition of nude painting and it subverts the expectations of the genre. Like much of her work, Zayden was a product of both gender tradition and a distinctive and determined agent of her own life. I'm going to zip through her uh, biography. Um, she carved herself, uh, she carved out an unconventional space for herself in the world by pursuing her artistic education, advancing her career and traveling on her own to Europe for further studies. She was born to a Jewish family um, living in Rigaud, Quebec, and moved early to Montreal when at the age of 16, she attended the Art Association of Montreal, where her talent won her many prizes and scholarships. She was um, loosely affiliated with the Beaver uh, Hall group and exhibiting in their 1921 and 1922 exhibitions, as well as we will see sharing their tastes to, uh, for contemporary subjects such as female sitters dressed in the fashion of the day. She traveled to, to Europe to continue her education, um, observe art, inspiration, and paint. This is where she also met her husband, the German-born painter, Eric Goldberg, which um, once they've returned to Montreal in 1935, precisely at the time that all of these exciting uh, advancement took place in the city, she decided to devote herself to his career and to end her own path as an exhibiting artist. Next slide, please. Thank you. In my view, attention to individuals and female experience is key to understanding Seiden's work as a whole. Painting of women of various social and ethnic backgrounds occupied an, impor an important place in her oeuvre. Working in and around the portrait genre, Zayden was able to crisply define her female sitters and go well beyond stereotypes and genre expectations. As you can see here, I juxtapose here three images, one of which is not a portrait, a pierrette, but I'm going to refer to the specific traits that make it a portrait like. The second one, old immigrant woman, is, is of unknown sitter. And the third one, we, we actually have the biographical uh, details of the sitter. Even if not identified by the painter or art historians, a pierrette appears to be a portrait of an individual, a quintessential jazz, uh, jazz age woman with short hair and a confident expression. Pierrette is the female version of Pierrot, a character with, origi with origin in the Italian Commedia dell'arte. Zayden, through this character, subverts many of the convention associates with Pierrot, instead of um, the character's sadness and tendency to pine over unfulfilled love. Pierrette, on the other hand, emanates sass and 20th century confidence, with one hand planted firmly on her hip, legs crossed, and a tossing a defined gaze over her shoulder. Her outfit, as well as her haircut, indeed position her as a thoroughly modern woman of the 1920s. Just as Pierrette's uh, personality shines through in the painting, so does that of the woman represented in the 1922 old immigrant woman. Again, the identity of the sitter is unknown, but she appears to be firstly individualized. More than group affiliation, be it her class, age, race, or profession, or social status, the sitter is characterized by her dignity, with stern expression, erect posture, and her quiet confidence. Lastly, the 1923 portrait of uh, Theodora Giedlaw, the British-American poet, which Zayden actually knew in person, 
um, is painted yet again with as the quintessential modern woman with her short bob, fashionable dress, and wide rim hat. But the painting's most striking trait is the sitter's reverie. Gidlaw appears to be deeply impressed, immersed in an inner world that is fully her own. The richness of her thoughts makes her neglect her role as a model for this portrait. Her eyes are lowered, her back slouched, and her shoulders slumped while her hands uh, fall listlessly in her lap. Crucially, um, Zayden, Regina Zayden, uh, Victoria who just asked, possessed a unique talent for creating images that are both a product of her time as well as highly individualized individualistic figures. This is especially noticeable when she plays with the convention of the new, new genre, a tradition which she turns on its head, I argue, when giving voice to her models. Um, can we go two slides, please? Next one, thanks. The 1925 nudes belong um, to these genre-defying work, a piece which both uh, lives in a long tr painterly tradition, but also sub subverts the expectations of the genre. The work depicts two women whose hairstyles locate them as contemporary of Zidens and her female figures. The models sit next to each other in intimate proximity, with only a few centimeters separating their body. But the two appear to be relaxed together, chatty, almost. Zidens provide no narrative context for this scene. She positions the figure in a nondescript landscape of rock formations. The painting lacks reference to any historical, biblical, mythological framework, or even any modern settings. Say a hammam or a brothel in the manner of Edwards Manet notorious uh, Olympia of 1863, or some of the, of the landscape, be it of Montreal, as we've just seen. The artist does not idealize the bodies of her model. The right-hand figure has pubic hair, um, and the left sitter has uh, ungainly folds in her fleshy stomach, making it clear that these subjects are real women, not nymphs. And they turn to each other for engagement, not towards the imagined gaze of the viewer. Despite these unconventional details, albeit being subtle, the picture was very well received. No controversy in the style of Torrance Newton's nude, as uh, Greta just so aptly described. Not only exhibited at the National, not only was it exhibited at the National Gallery Special Exhibition of Canadian Art in 1926, it was also purchased by the institution. Perhaps because Zayden so subtly introduced her objections to the genre, while also maintaining a traditional technique of color application with delicate modeling and shading. To conclude, the artist, as a woman who painted women, avoided the hypersexualization of her models or their subjection to the male gaze, so common in this genre and the history of art as a whole. Instead, she integrated lessons from her work as a portrait painter by giving individual characters to her models, characteristic to her models, by making the key relationship in the painting between the two women and not an unseen imagined male viewer, Zayden allowed her female subjects to negotiate their own place in the world and insist on their personhood. Thank Wonderful. you very much.